I guess this is when people say, oh, can you put on the, the anti-fat filter? Yeah. This is what they're asking for. They're all, they really want anamorphic. <laughs> Alrighty guys, so this is the Suro 50mm 1.6 time full frame anamorphic lens. And if you're looking for a way to add more character to your shots, you are gonna love this lens. How's it going guys? Andrew Murph here from Down Under in Gold Coast, Australia. So I've been keeping my eye on Suray for the past few years since that released that 1.33 times anamorphics, but I didn't really like the look of the 1.33 times squeeze because it didn't really give that true anamorphic look. And if you're wondering what I'm talking about when I say the anamorphic look, it's this look like. So it's the white aspect ratio and kind of like the blue flares often seen in say like Michael Bay and JJ Abrams films. But there is more to anamorphic lenses than just, you know, adding some black bars and some lens flares in post because the way anamorphic lenses actually work is by shooting a stretched image that looks something like this. Now, if you've never seen what anamorphic footage looks like before you see the final image, it looks super weird, I know. And this is because we shoot like this to begin with, then scale down the height or stretch out the width, whatever you want to do, in post or in your camera as well, to match whatever the squeeze ratio is of the anamorphic that we have. And you end up with a wide aspect ratio, kind of like when you add your black bars to the top and bottom, except we haven't lost any resolution in the process of doing this. Plus because the original image is stretched, things like bokeh that were traditionally round now become oval, which is one of the identifiable traits of anamorphic lenses. Now the Serie A 50mm full frame 1.6 anamorphic has a 1.6 times squeeze factor, which means that we need to divide the height by 1.6 and that will give us the actual height once we de-squeeze it in the camera or in post-production. So in DaVinci Resolve to do this, we basically change the height to 0.625 and we'll get a 2.8 to one aspect ratio, which is super wide. Now to get a normal wide screen ratio of say 235 to one, we need to basically chop the edges of the image or just scale it up a little bit in post. But this allows us the flexibility of being able to kind of like move the image left and right in post. Kind of like when you shoot DCI 4K, you get a little bit extra on the sides if you want to kind of like move it from side to side. Right now quickly some specs, so this is a 50mm focal length, it has an aperture range of T2.9 to T16, an 82mm front filter thread, a 0.75 minimum focus distance, weighs just over one kilogram and has a standard 0.8 pitch uh, gears on both the focus and the aperture as well, as well as hard stops as well, which is awesome. And it's just it's in, just in general just built like a tank. Like this thing is solid ass. All right, now if you're worried about being a Nikon shooter and not being able to use these, don't stress. All good. These new full front anamorphics come in a Canon RF L mount, Sony E and Nikon Z mount, which is great because it means that we can finally use it on the Canon C70 directly on the thing without any adapters. Now one thing that first threw me off with this was actually the weight. So when I first picked it up, it felt light considering how big the lens is and it, it's like it's just over one kilogram so it's not super duper heavy but like when i compared it to my current cinema lenses that i use which is the makey series it actually felt lighter even though the makey series lenses that i use are lighter than this if that makes sense but i think it's because it's like a bigger lens so the weight is spread out more so it actually feels lighter than you'd expect which is actually really handy now shooting with this lens is amazing. So the image it produces has really nice character, has those you know blue flares, that widescreen aspect ratio, while it's still also being very sharp wide open at T2.9. And that is the one thing that I'm not the biggest fan of with the Atlas Orion anamorphics. When you're shooting wide open at T2, the image just gets so soft and kind of just falls apart. Like it makes it really hard to use things like focus peaking. When you stop it down to T4, everything kind of becomes sharp again and you can kind of start using some stuff. But from T2 to T4, you're losing like over a stop of light. Whereas like with this, you can shoot wide open and you still get sharp image. So I'd rather have a minimum aperture a little bit higher, but have like a really sharp image than have a wider aperture wide open, but lose kind of like all your sharpness and stuff like that. Now as a general rule of thumb, 1.33 times anamorphics are designed for super 35 mil sensors and two times anamorphics are designed for full frame sensors that can shoot three, two or open gate. Now, because this is a 1.6 time, it kind of like sits in the middle, which 
I think is actually really beneficial because it means that you can use it on both Super 35 mm sensors and also full frame sensors as well. Plus because it's a 1.6x and a 1.3x, that anamorphic look is more defined. And again, that was one reason why I didn't want to get the 1.33 times because it's just, even though that is designed for a Super 35 mm sensor, you just don't get the that real like defined anamorphic look. Focusing on these is really smooth. Uh, they've done a really good job. However, one thing I wish they changed is to actually make it a cinema focus throw. So it's a full metal housing. They're using T-stops with the cinema. It's an anamorphic lens, which is typically a cinema lens. Yet the focus throw is 90 degrees, which is typically what you'd find in a photography lens. So I would love to have seen a 270 degree focus throw, just like you'll see on other um, cinema lenses but I'm not sure if this is to help with stuff like, you know, focus breathing or squeeze factor changing when focusing. But yeah, I do wish that had a, a bigger focus throw. However, one thing that Sura has done, which I absolutely love, is they've made sure the focus gear and the aperture gear on all the lenses in this set is in the exact same spot. So when you actually change lenses, you don't have to change you know, your focus mode and stuff. You can just take it off, put it on, recalibrate it, and you're ready to go, which is, it, it honestly, it, it's one of those things that it seems so small, but it saves so much time, especially when you're kind of like under pump and trying to just like smash out a whole bunch of shots. Not having to kind of like readjust stuff on your camera, just being able to quickly switch your lens is so good. They've also given us focus markings uh, in feet and meters on both sides of the lens, which again is really good. They've also given us aperture on both sides as well. And that is a huge thing uh, since I kind of like have start, started to do some work on some feature films and whatnot. Uh, having aperture on both sides means that whoever is kind of like marking data for each shot means they don't have to kind of come over and look at you if you're operating from the left side of camera. They can just kind of go around the right side of the camera and go, okay, what lens are we on? What aperture are we on? And just get all that data without having to kind of like look over your shoulder, which is actually a huge thing. Now the feature that I absolutely love about anamorphics and the reason that I've been wanting to get my hands on a set for so long is the way the compression works. So basically, in a nutshell, so this is what you get in camera, but it looks really weird. Yeah, you probably you look like you have the longest body known yeah. to man. I guess this is when people say, oh, can you put on the, the anti-fat filter? Yeah. This is what they're asking for. They're all good. They really want anamorphic. <laughs> this they is how they. This is how they film Slender Man. And then if we squeeze it, this is what the ratio is actually going to look like. And then if we turn on this, this is a 16 by 9 grab of that, uh, I guess, that image. And basically, this inside area is what a spherical 50 mil would see, and this outside area is what the 50 mil 1.6 times Sirei anamorphic seeing. So, if you've got a monitor that's not a small HD. Um, what would you actually see through your camera? Like obviously it wouldn't squeeze it. So you would be trying to monitor it with a really weird ratio. I'm assuming that would make it incredibly hard to do things like focus or anything like that. I think a lot of people get freaked out by squeeze factors because it's like, what's a 1.3 and what's a two times a blah, blah, blah. If you think about it like this, so a 50 millimeter anamorphic is gonna give you the compression and the depth of field and the look of a standard 50 mil spherical lens. However, because of that squeeze factor, we have to divide the focal length by the squeeze factor to get the actual width, because obviously we're gonna squeeze the image down. So this is a 50 millimeter full frame, and it's got a 1.6 times squeeze factor. So if, if we divide 50 by 1.6, we get 31.25, which means that our image is gonna have the width of a 31.25 millimeter lens, and the compression and the look of a 50 millimeter lens. Now, why this is so cool is like when you're shooting on things like, you know, lenses like 85, 100, 135, the image it produces is just so good. Like the, the compression and the depth of field and everything is just so nice. However, it's just so tight. And obviously like, that's just what you do. If you want a tight shot, you use a tighter focal length, but it'd be cool if obviously you could have that tight look and all that depth of field and that compression while still getting more in the scene. And that's exactly why anamorphics are so good. And this can be seen in a ton of movies where like the shot will be quite wide, but there's still a lot of compression and depth of field in the shot without the focal plane being like, you know, the size of a hair, which is something you have to deal with if you stop down your aperture rather than shooting with something like an anamorphic. And it's super interesting. I love how much, how like, how wide you can actually see with the 50 millimeter, 50 millimeter lens, but you're still obviously getting that awesome compression that the 50 millimeter has so it seems super interesting to me that um you get those benefits it does feel though that for you to shoot with anamorphics you need to have more gear 
to be able to like actually monitor that and do it properly. Now flaring on these lenses is insane and sometimes it can be a little bit too much for certain types of work uh, and it's gonna be more pronounced towards the center of the frame. But even like towards the edge of the frame, we're still able to get some nice flaring when the source of the light is off the screen, which I actually really like. The flare color is a nice blue, but it can be manipulated if you do use colored lights as well, as you can see here. Now as for focus breathing, it's not the best I've seen, but it's also not the worst either. And the main thing to notice is that the squeeze factor doesn't seem to change when you are actually pulling focus, which is the main thing to keep in mind here. Now, as for price, the uh, 50 millimeter full frame 1.6 time anamorphic from Suray will be 1,499 US dollars. And that also come in a 35, 75 and 100 mil focal length as well, which is essentially the same price. Uh, so you can get a full complete set of, set of this, which is actually super cool. And Suray has just announced their 1.25 times adapter as well to basically convert these 1.6 time anamorphics to a two time. So if you're wanting a more defined look or you're shooting on a camera that can shoot open gate or full frame, then that would be a perfect option instead of having to you know, go to like Atlas Orion's and stuff, we just start getting way more expensive than this. Like these are what are $1,500 each. There's the Atlas Orion ones, I think they're like $10,000 each. So very big jump up. All right, now who is this actually for? Well, if you're wanting to get rid of that like really clean, crisp and clinical look, then anamorphic lenses are definitely something that will fill that void for you. So the character these lenses give that just takes like ordinary scenes and give them like a visual look that is really hard to actually achieve with spherical lenses is just so good. Consider liking and subscribing if you did enjoy this look at the Suray 50mm 1.6x full frame anamorphic lens. And if you want to find out any more about this, I'll leave some links down below. And let me know if you want me to review the other ones as well, because this has obviously the first in the set. There's four other, uh, three other lenses that are in this set, but would love to kind of like provide some more anamorphic content for you guys. But otherwise, stay creative and just be you. Have fun.